Uh, welcome to our chemistry lessons. Thank you for using Questlift. Thank you for viewing our videos. In this lesson today we are going to introduce a topic called ionic equilibria. A very important topic in the study of physical chemistry. In the introduction today I will be sharing with you what we mean by pH. pH of solutions, pH of solutions. This is a term that we are very familiar with, that we have used several times in the study, even in ordinary chemistry. It is a term that cuts across many subjects. In agriculture, in biology, in chemistry, we use the term pH. pH is normally defined by very um, by different subjects differently, looking at the alkalinity or acidity of an acid or of a solution. However, in chemistry and particularly here at advanced level, we are going to look at pH as the potential of hydrogen ions, we are going to measure the pH of a solution depending on the concentration of hydrogen ions present in a solution. And so, in our definition, which is a mathematical definition, we shall be saying that pH is the negative, negative logarithm to base 10, to base 10 of the concentration of the concentration of hydrogen ions. pH is the negative logarithm to base 10 of the concentration of hydrogen ions. This is a mathematical expression which you can write as pH being equal to negative log base 10, the molar concentration of hydrogen ions. So the pH of any given solution will be calculated from this expression. Now looking at this expression, we can tell that the lower the value of pH Comma, the higher the concentration, the concentration of hydrogen ions because of the expression negative log. The lower the value of pH simply means the higher the concentration of hydrogen ions. The opposite is true. The higher the value of pH, the lower the concentration of hydrogen ions. Now, as far as pH of solutions is concerned, there are two important ions that we are interested in. As we have seen, the issue is about hydrogen ion concentration. However, there are solutions which do not contain hydrogen, ion uh, hydrogen ions, but rather have a higher concentration of the OH ions. That means we can still calculate pH of this solution depending whether the solution has a lot of OH ions as compared to hydrogen ions, we can still get the pH. And we shall be seeing that some values of pH will be very high and some values of pH will be very low. Depending on this equation we are saying, once the value of pH is low, that means there is a lot of hydrogen ions in that solution. 
if the value of pH is high, then there are very few, or the concentration of hydrogen ions is very low, and that means there is a very high concentration of OH ions. These two ions here are antagonistic in solutions. The one whose concentration is high determines whether the pH is higher or less. Now, to understand how these two are important in determining the pH of solutions, we look at the ionic product of water. Ionic product of water. Water undergoes partial ionization. When water undergoes partial ionization, it will give us both the hydrogen ions, aqueous, and the hydroxyl ions, aqueous. And from this equilibrium, there is a constant that governs this equilibrium, and that constant is called KW. The equilibrium constant for the ionization of water. And KW is equal to the molar concentration of hydrogen ions times the molar concentration of OH ions. And this is called the ionic product of water. Now, the value of K water is well known. This is an important equation. Since the value of K water is known, we can always use it to calculate whatever we want in a solution. If we want hydrogen ions, we can calculate hydrogen ions from this expression. If you want OH ions, we can calculate OH ions from this solution. And because this value is known, K water is equal to 1 times 10 power negative 14 moles squared decimeter negative 6. This is the constant called KW, the ionic product constant of water. And once this value is known, if we take the assumption, if we take the assumption that at equilibrium, the concentration of hydrogen ions is equal to the concentration of OH ions, then we can redefine KW in terms of hydrogen ions. Since pH depends on hydrogen ions, we can say that the pH of a solution is equal now, sorry, we can say that the KW is now equal to hydrogen ion concentration. The position of OH, since they are equal, can be taken also by another hydrogen ions because at equilibrium, Hydrogen concentration is equal to OH ion concentration. So instead of OH, we can put another hydrogen ion concentration there, such that KW is hydrogen ion concentration squared. And if it is, and we substitute KW, which is 1 times 10 power negative 14, being equal to uh, the square root will equal to the concentration of hydrogen ions. So we will get the hydrogen ion concentration as 1 times 10, as 1 times 10 power negative 7, as the concentration of hydrogen ions in solution. And if we go to this and substitute in the expression of pH, pH will equal to negative log to base 10 of the hydrogen concentration, which is 1 times 10 power negative 7. And that would mean, that would mean that pH of water is going to be 7. pH of water is going to be 7. And probably we already knew that the pH of water is 7. And this is how it comes up. This pH of 7 comes from the ionic product of water, which comes from the ionization of water. And because pH is 7, and pH of 7 is for water, then we normally take or have these three standards, that pH 7 
is for neutral solutions. Now, pH greater than 7 is for alkaline solutions. Solution is with a higher concentration of hydroxyl ions than the hydrogen ions. We have a pH greater than 7. And then pH less than 7 is for acidic solutions. pH less than 7 is for acidic solution. In other words, these ones have a very high concentration of the hydrogen ions than the hydroxyl ions. And if that is true, then we would have the pH scale, therefore, the pH scale will run, runs from, the normal pH scale should run from 0 to 7 and then to 14. Anything below 7 is going to be considered to be is going to be considered to be acidic. Anything above 7 is going to be considered to be alkaline. Alkaline means there is a high concentration of OH ions than the concentration of hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ion concentration is very low. Whereas acidic, there is a high concentration of hydrogen ions uh, which is greater than the which is greater than the concentration of OH what? ions. And this can always tell us, this pH scale can always predict for us, depending on the nature of the solution, that my pH should be greater than 7, my pH should be less than 7. Now, there are other several equations that are important in the calculation of pH. Other than pH being equal to negative log to be a hydrogen ion concentration, what if I am given a solution of hydroxyl ions and I'm supposed to calculate pH? How are they related? That's where we can use KW. If I know OH ion and I know this, then I can always get the hydrogen ion concentration. However, it is also possible to create another relationship between hydrogen ion concentration and hydroxyl ion concentration and then the pH. What is that relationship? We can relationship, relationship between the potential of hydrogen pH, pOH, and what we call PKW the potential of the ionic product of water. Now, in chemistry every time, we have PKW, this one would mean the negative log base 10 KW. pH, we have already seen, is negative log base 10 concentration of hydrogen ions. And then pOH would be negative log base 10 concentration of OH ions. And if this is known, then we would go, we would go to the ionic product of water and we introduce negative logarithms and we see what we come up with. So introducing, introducing negative log to base 10 in KW expression. This. So if we negative log base 10 kW will equal to negative log base 10 of this whole product. Molar concentration of hydrogen ions times the molar concentration of OH ions. Like that. So this, we have already defined it here. It's called the PKW. P K 
w this and we can separate these and allow the rule of logarithms to come in so we shall have negative log base 10 concentration of hydrogen ions plus negative log base 10 concentration of OH ions that's the rule of logarithms once they are at the same base then we can add them and so this would be p k w being equal to ph negative log to be same hydrogen and concentration is ph here and then plus this is p o h p o h meaning that we can have that expression too that pkw is ph plus p oh but what is pkw we said pkw is negative log base 10 of kw but kw is known and if it is known then we can say that we can say that pkw is negative log base 10 of 1 times 10 and negative 14 and this will equal to this will equal to a value of 14. So meaning that we can rewrite this expression by saying by saying that pH plus POH is equal to 14 because the value of PKW is known and is 14. Ah, now as far as pH of solutions is concerned, there are so far three important equations that we need that will help us. The three important equations are I will make them for number one. So important, important expressions in calculating pH of solution is number one the expression of pH pH is equal to negative log base 10 concentration of hydrogen ions that is the first important one number two number two is about POH which is negative log base 10 concentration of OH ions another important expression number three is about combining the two pH plus POH is equal to 14 this is another important equation you will find that in many calculations we shall need to use this but also, if you don't want this, if you don't want to use number three, we can always say that KW is equal to the molar concentration of hydrogen ions times the molar concentration of OH ions. This is the four. Every time you want to change from POH to pH, you either use this expression or this expression. They will be very important. So, in this introduction of ionic equilibrium, we have looked at the pH of solutions and we've developed or we've come up with three expressions that are important in the calculation of pH of solutions as we shall be seeing in the next, uh, in the next video. In the next video, we shall be looking at now the pH of acids and bases. And we shall be seeing how these equations are helpful in calculating pH of acids and bases. Please don't miss.